Well, I'm going to um, take a sidestep and talk to a highly educated person about my knowledge of the brain. So um, <laughs> if this goes wrong, you know, I apologize in advance. Uh, I have uh, what little I know about the brain was to do with the fight or flight response and how there's uh, an area of your brain called the amygdala. And uh, that kicks in when you feel fight or flight and it sort of takes over. So what I wanted to ask you about is, is there, well, there probably are, but what are the other examples within the brain where that happens? And how would you know when that happens? Because I find it quite difficult to be able to establish which part of your brain is actually taking over at what time. So what do you think of that question? And how's my neuroscience knowledge? <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're right. You're right. The amygdala, when, when the amygdala activates, part of the amygdala, the, the amygdala is actually made up of, of um, several nodes. Um, and one of those nodes is, is associated with the fight or flight response. And when that node activates, it then activates your fight or flight response. And your fight or flight response uh, is just that your heart rate speeds up, more blood is pumped to your muscles and away from your stomach, which is why you get that funny feeling in your stomach and feel a little bit sick when it happens. Um, and you start sweating because more blood's been pumped to your muscles, so they actually heat up a bit, but that's so that you can actually either run or fight. Um, and then you, know, you get changes in your eyes and so on as well. So you can tell that it's happening because your heart starts racing um, and that's how you feel it. And a lot of people who, well, anxiety is really due to overstimulation of the amygdala. So the amygdala keeps firing even though there's no reason for that fight or flight response and therefore their heart starts racing a lot and they feel really anxious about it. Um, so that's, you know, associated with anxiety. But I think the thing that, we get a bit wrong about the brain is this idea that, you know, it's the amygdala is taken over or the orbitofrontal area, which is your emotions, is taken over or somewhere else is taken over. When we know that your whole brain is working all the time and it's always all working and no particular reason e region ever, ever takes over, there's just more of an emphasis on one region because it becomes hyperactive compared to other regions. So everything's always running at the same time and everything is always happening um it's just that we have um we notice some things more than we notice other things so there's lots of areas of your brain um which are involved in storage of your of your long-term memory but we don't have any access to our long-term memory so we're not aware of that at all because it's it's uh, it's parts of our brain that we're unaware of and consciousness that we're aware of so what you, you know, you're aware of now when i'm talking which is what you're actually listening to uh is your working memory but that's really limited so most of what our brain is doing we're, we're not aware of most of it happens without our awareness which is why about somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of what we do every day we do automatically without any awareness at all um, and they're all the habits that we do constantly and so most of what we're doing and most of what our brains do we don't know anything about. And then there's a few things that come to our consciousness or come to our working memory, such as when our fight or flight response goes off, because we get that anxious feeling, we get that heart rate um, going really quickly. And, and it's basically the amygdala is really just trying to capture your attention so that you'll notice what could be potentially a, a um, threatening situation or a fearful situation you've actually got to do something about. Um, and that's why we sort of, we notice it and we think that it's taking over, but it's not really taking over because there's all this other stuff already going on as well. Um, so yeah, I think, I think one of the, the biggest, um, misunderstandings about the brain is, is that, that the whole brain is working all the time. It, it's just that we've only got this little tiny bit of it, our working memory, which is really, really capacity limited which we're actually aware of, and everything else is going on without our awareness. But it's all doing stuff for us, which is why most of what we do, we do without, without being aware of it. So is um, one of those misconceptions, uh, we only use 10% of our brain or something along those lines, is that is that one that you hear <laughs> yeah. all the time and think that's just not true? Yeah, that's absolute nonsense. And it's a silly one because <laughs> where it came from um, is the idea that 
you know, we've had people in the past like Einstein or like Da Vinci who are extremely intelligent. And if you compare what they are able to do to the average person, the average person only did about 10% of what they did. And so therefore the average person only uses 10% of their brain compared to those people. But, but that's just yeah, absolute nonsense. Now, uh, we're using our whole brain all the time and we're using everything that we've got all the time. And, and the more you use it, the better it gets and the stronger it gets. So, you know, those people really did just, a lot of them, well, in the case of Einstein, right, he just, all he did was focus on physics um, and, and theoretical physics. And he, he had um, all his suits were exactly the same colour and exactly the same style. And all his shirts were the same colour and the same style. And he only had two pairs of shoes that were exactly the same and all his socks were the same colour. So they didn't have a, to make any decisions in the morning. Because all he wanted to do is think about physics, and all he did was think about physics. Now, if you or I spent all our time doing nothing but thinking about physics, then we would probably be just as amazing at physics as he was. But then a lot of other things we're not good at, and there was a lot of other things that he probably wasn't good at as well. Um, so, yeah, no, we, we use 100% of our brains all the time.